Recently, I had the opportunity to go back to Accessibility Scotland, which is a yearly accessibility conference, the only one of its kind in the UK, and I had an amazing time. But this year was a little bit different. I went on my own, which is normal. I travel, I'm a disabled person, I travel, I can go places. But the big difference this year was I went in my wheelchair. And so, yeah, this is a bit of a story, a bit of a breakdown of my journey from Newcastle in a wheelchair to Edinburgh, to the International Conference Center and how Accessibility Scotland went for me. So I wanted to go to Accessibility Scotland again because for me there's there's nothing else like it. It's the only the only conference, the only event that I get to go to where I feel comfortable. I don't need to worry about is it accessible? Can I get there? What about the venue? Normally when I go to events, the, the run up or even the day of, it's very very difficult. For me, something like Accessibility Scotland takes all that away. I don't have to worry, is going to be signers, is there going to be subtitles? So for me, it's the comfort and it's the familiarity and it's the not having to worry. The only event that I can feel comfortable, relaxed and actually participate in. Um, so that's, that's one reason. And the other reason is just to network, to meet like-minded people. When I go there, I don't need to explain spoon theory. Uh, I don't need to explain when I forget words, when I slow down a bit, when I get a bit sore, it's it's all there. People people who live the experience, live as disabled people, or people who want to help, people who are interested in accessibility, they might work in that space, and there's just nothing else like it. Yeah, my first time on a train by myself. <laughs> it, it was amazing, actually. Um, I was very worried about the lead up to that. Uh, you read a lot of horror stories and even on the BBC it's a horror story about people being pushed, people being left on platforms, people being left on trains. That was my big worry. Um, going there was perfect. Um, I got met at the station in Newcastle. I got boarded plenty of time um, in my own sort of my own time. The guy was friendly, we had a chat. It was a comfortable and, and pleasant experience. Um, when we got to Edinburgh, I got off the train. That was fine, there was a person waiting there. The train terminated, so I wasn't in danger of being left on the train. Everybody got off, so that was good. So I went from there, straight through, and back again, it was, it was perfect. Getting off the train on Edinburgh, they, they helped me off the train, they took me all the way to the taxi rank, and the taxi rank's accessible, which was amazing. It's not something we get here in the Northeast, unfortunately. But yeah, the whole service was, was fantastic, and I can't thank LNER enough. The, the taxis in Edinburgh, the black cabs, are all accessible, which was amazing. I got to the taxi rank, and my experience in Newcastle is I have to wait for a few few minutes, sometimes longer. You have to wait for the right taxi to come. Um, and at the station in Edinburgh, that just wasn't the case. There were four taxis there. I could have gotten into any one of those taxis, but the first one had people in, the second one was booked, and I got into the third one. It took minutes. Um, the ramp comes out of the side of the new black cabs, so there's no awkward fumbling around while the driver goes and gets the ramp and you're stood there in the rain. It just works. And yeah, so that combined with the train experience, couldn't have had a better time traveling in the wheelchair. So the different talks on the day were, were fantastic. And for me, the biggest takeaway, the biggest thing I learned was, was the difference between empathy and compassion. We want compassion, you want to be compassionate to disabled people, you don't want to give empathy. And for me, it was learning the difference between the two, but learning it from, from Matt May from Adobe, who is not only the head of accessibility at Adobe, he's also a Buddhist monk. So it was quite interesting, some of the comparisons and some of the explanations and his deep dive into empathy being not a bad thing, but not a necessary thing, um, was, was the biggest takeaway and, and the best thing I learned on the day. So for me, the only way, the only thing that could have made the conference better was if it was went on longer. <laughs> if if you could maybe have it on a two-day event or a three-day event, well, just go for the whole week. Um, I would, <laughs> but but for me, um, yeah, there's nothing that could be improved. Um, I was lucky enough to get some merchandise. They don't sell merchandise yet, but I I very cheekily asked and was given literally t-shirts off people's back. So. Thanks for that. Um, so selling merch, maybe having a two day event would, would be good, but the only the only minor niggle would be um, the issue I had on the taxis. Um, they were accessible, they were available, they were great, 
but they were cash only, which is not something I'm used to. Um, run in Newcastle in the Northeast, you can book by app, you can pay by app, you can pay contactless. Um, so I wasn't really expecting that, but really, if that's the only bad thing I have to say about that entire journey and experience, I'm more than happy with that. But yeah, I would absolutely recommend Accessibility Scotland to, to anybody. Whether you realize it or not, accessibility affects you and your job, your service, your role, your company, whatever it is, you are affected. You have, a, you have an obligation to be accessible as possible um, to, to disabled people. So absolutely everybody should go and it should be, you should go for the right reasons. You don't want to go just to tick a box. You want to go for a good reason. You want to go for compassion. You want to go to learn more, to educate yourself and to, to bring that knowledge and that information and that different way of thinking back to your company, your business, your management team, whatever it might be. Um, I definitely recommend that people have a look. The videos are also available online, so definitely worth checking out those, even if you can't make the conference.